Hello, this is Jack Jackson. This video we're going to talk a little bit about affine plane geometries or just introduce this concept. So one class of geometries that includes both Euclidean geometry and several finite geometries is a class of affine geometries. So if we take the existence and instance postulates from our list of postulates for Euclidean geometry and then add the uh, Euclidean parallel postulate, then we obtain the following list, which is a list of postulates for an affine plane. Notice that everything here is considered to take place in a single plane. So if we take Euclidean geometry, which these postulates work, we pull them from our Euclidean geometry postulates. So if we restrict Euclidean geometry to a single plane, it's an infinite affine plane. So here they are. Postul there are just four of them. Postulates for an affine plane. Postulate one, there exist at least three non-collinear points. Postulate 2, every line contains at least two points. Postulate 3, given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line containing both points. And the parallel postulate, this is the Playfair form, given a line and a point not on it, there exists exactly one line containing that point that does not intersect the given line. Okay. Um... This version here is due is named after Playfair, an English mathematician, uh, but he definitely was not the first one to come up with it. So let's build a model for the smallest possible affine plane. Okay, and I'm not going to restate each postulate when I when I give it as a justification here because they're all right here. If these were on a different page, I would state the whole statement of the postulate in the theorem or in the proof. So here's our proof our, and our derivation. All right, step one, there exist at least three distinct nonlinear points A, B, and C. That's postulate one, which is our existence postulate. All the other ones are if-then statements, or they could be writ rewritten that way. And so our illustration so far is points. Might as well give them names, A, B, and C. There they are. Now, there exist distinct lines, the line containing A and B, which contains the set A and B. We do not know yet whether that is all there is in that line or whether there might be more. So we can't say, you, for example, you can't say line A, B equals this set. You could say this set is a subset of this line, which is what we mean by containing. Uh, line AC contains the set A and C, and line BC is the unique line containing B and C. Now, statement one said we have these three points, and they're not collinear. And postulate three says if there's a, there's a unique line containing each a pair of points. Okay. Statement one guarantees that these are distinct lines. Why do we know that? Well, if, uh, if, any, if these were the same line, then A, B, and C would be collinear, which is uh, uh, contradicted by that really original step. We're not going to show that these are the only two points on the line. Turns out there's a model that we're going to find, a minimal model, where they are the only two points on the line, but there might be more, more than two, or there might even be infinitely many, like there are in Euclidean geometry. We know Euclidean geometry satisfies these postulates as well. There exists a fourth line distinct from the three lines generated thus far containing point C, which is parallel to the line containing A and B. Okay, so the parallel postulate, postulate four, says if we have um, a line, the line containing A and B, here's a point C not on it, there has to be a parallel, a unique parallel, one and only parallel here to that. Now, so far, we only know there's one point on this line. But wait a minute, postulate 2 says there have to be at least two points on that line, so we need a point D. Now, where could D be different? D has to be different from all of these. For example, for first of all, C and D have to be two distinct points on that line, so it can't be the same as C. And if it were the same as A or B, then we wouldn't have a parallel. So this is a, four, a new fourth point. Now, let's see what else we've got. 
we call the line from statement 3, line CD, because it's the unique line containing C and D. And notice that no point of line CD is on AB, and no point other than C is on line AC or BC. Okay, lines have to intersect uh, in, in just one point if they're uh, distinct lines, and they do intersect. But, of course, we could have some parallel lines like we do here. Okay, so no intersection points other than the ones we've got no, noted here. Now, we also have to have some other lines. There exist lines AC, BD, AD also exist because any two pair of points has... Uh, has a line, a, a line, unique line containing them. Two points determine a line. That's that's one of our uh, postulates up there, postulate three. Now, for the same argument as above, none of these lines are the same as each other. So we have a minimum of six lines, four points here. And in fact, this model is an is a an affine plane of minimal size. So we have found a model for a minimal size affine plane. So here it is. Uh, the set of four points are A, B, C, and D. The set of lines are any pairs of those, A, B, um, that set, the set containing A and C, the set containing A and D, and so forth. So we have six of those lines, and here's an illustration for it. Notice that we have um, three pairs of parallel lines. Uh, whether it's in the model here, the way I've got them colored, A, B, and C, D do not intersect. They're the blue lines here, or the blue sets up here. The green lines are also parallel. That's the green sets up here have a, an empty intersection, and the black ones don't intersect either. B, D, and A, C don't intersect. Don't let, don't let this point right here f confuse you. Uh, remember, these, this, is, this line A, C does not include... <clears throat> Uh, any points other than A and C at this point for this model. Okay, so there is no, there is nothing in between A and C. There is no intersection here of these, even though it may look like it from our picture. So we found out, we were able to prove that affine planes must contain at least four points and six lines, and each point must be on at least three lines. These are... Uh, some characteristics that came out of our description. Now, there are affine planes that are bigger than this, but still finite. And of course, there are. There's the infinite uh, affine plane, which is the uh, the Euclidean geometry plane. So this is not the only one. Uh, there is actually a pretty robust uh, research area or, or area of mathematics dealing with finite geometries, specifically with affine planes and projected planes that we'll talk about in our next video. Uh, we're not going to go into that very deeply at this point. We're just giving a brief introduction to give us a little bit of better understanding of some of the things uh, that we can do for the foundations of Euclidean geometry and how some of these different postulates fit together to give us other consequences. So the main thing out of this to get is how, how we can take a set of postulates the interplay among them, even if there's only just four of them, yields some interesting, you know, mildly interesting at least, results. Some allows us to uh, build a model in this way. So next time we'll talk about another type of finite geometry called a projective plane.